Okay. Is everybody here now? Okay. Can somebody that is truly saved be used of the devil? Yes. I'm in Greek. Uh, I want to hear more ways a person can be used of the devil. <laughs> Brother Humphrey, have you ever been used of the devil since you've been saved? Many times. Okay. Let's find out some of the ways we can be used of the devil. Trying to get you to do something wrong. You do something wrong, but let's find out what the wrong things are. That's what I'm heading for. Um, he could get you to teach false doctrine. False doctrine? Okay. Uh, somebody else? We're not getting to where I want to get. Backbiting. Sowing this for. How many you know we can gospel? <coughs> yeah. How many believe almost every Christian has? Mm -hmm. Including yeah. yours truly. I know you have it. But Brother Humphrey has. And I'll be touching on that, Lord willing, on Sunday night about the murmur. What Jesus said about it, they could not enter in. Okay. What other ways can somebody that is saved, says they're a Christian, that we live in the Bible, that's Holy Ghost filled, and still be using the devil? Somebody tell me. Just loosen their mouth. No, I've never done that. <laughs> I, don't really, I just don't know why there. How many of you have ever lost your temper? Yeah. How many of you ever said something at the spur of the moment and it felt good to get it out of you? Sure. But after you got it out of you, what happens? You were wrong. Oh, you. and then you have a brother or a sister that says, but it's okay. Everybody needs to get it out sometimes, and they need to have somebody to, you know, like, oh. Oh, yeah. Just be, I be angry and sin not. Sin not. Brother Michael, I want you to read there where Jesus is talking about he's going to be crucified, this and that. And here are the 12 disciples, and how, what, how many years have the disciples been with Jesus now? How many years have the twelve disciples been with Jesus up to this point? Did Jesus get ready to go to the cross? Oh, three years. Three and a half. Three and a half. So we say three and a half years. Three and a half okay? Years. So you would think all the disciples sleeping with Jesus, hearing Jesus speak to all the miracles, us and that, they've been walking in the heavenly clouds of the Spirit of God, that they've been just like an angel of God. So we say, man, you'd think so. So if Jesus said anything, which one of you in here would want to argue with Jesus if he said something? No. Not, not me. No. If Jesus says something and we disagree with him, is that common? No. How many times do we argue with God when he does ask us to do something and we say, no? <coughs> Come on. Uh, we're going to, we're going to read that. Uh, this is uh, Matthew <coughs> chapter 16, uh, starting at verse 20. Matthew 16? Yes. Okay. Uh, Matthew 16. Matthew 16, starting at verse 21. Okay. Right 16, 21. All right. Uh, 21 through 23 says, from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go up to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and be raised on the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not... Read that again there, read that again. Then Peter took him, what? Peter took him and began to rebuke him. How... What's that word that he's saying here? Peter begin to what? Rebuke. Rebuke. Somebody tell me what rebuke is. Scolding. Telling you you're wrong. <coughs> you you Rebuke it. You're wrong. You're wrong. I know what I'm talking about. You just don't know what you're talking about. Rebuke it. Okay. Go ahead, brother. Saying, be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Listen, listen to this here. 
<coughs> Say, be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be one of them. Why is the devil so concerned about that? Once more, I want you to really dig in with me here. Be it far from thee, Lord, yeah. this shall not be unto thee. What's he talking me about being far from me? It's not going to happen. Well, um, this Bible says that means God forbid, Lord. May God forbid that should happen. But why is the devil so concerned about Jesus dying on the cross? Come on. If he did it for the world, it would, it would have everybody remain turned to him. If Jesus, if Jesus hadn't done it, and we die, where were we going? Hell. So do you see why the devil is coming through somebody else? That's right, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't. How many of you believe that if God has something for you to do, the devil will come and try to tell you you're not supposed to do it? Okay. Anybody still with me? Yeah, amen. And if you're not in tune with God, you'll say, oh, maybe that wasn't what exactly. I was supposed to do. I got a flat tire. I shouldn't have went to church today. God was keeping me from being in an accident. Yeah. And how many of you know the devil will come up with all kinds of reasons that you should not do it? Somebody say amen. Yeah, I'm saying mm -hmm. that's right. Did Jesus want to go to the cross? No. We're going to be reading later on how he set his face towards Jerusalem. Yeah, he, said, he knew he had to do it. He was drawn there, but when he got there, he said, "Nevertheless, not my will, God." He asked three times, and this cup passed from him. Right. So here he's tormented with that. Well, what part of him is being torn? Is it the flesh? Is it the spirit? What part is it that's not wanting to go to the cross? I think all of it. <clears throat> I think the mind, the body, the soul, and the spirit. You know. Everybody say, just the flesh. No, the flesh. We're going to read this in the It says the spirit is willing, but the flesh, the flesh is weak. <laughs> so if we tend to the flesh, yeah. flesh is going to win that. So you see, when the devil come to Jesus the, the 40, 40 days of nights of temptation, <coughs> did he hit Jesus with the flesh stuff? Yes. yes. Do you remember anything? Lord, if you'd be hungry, you could turn these stones into bread. So he will hit with fleshly things. We're supposed to fast and all of a sudden we get nauseated. We say, well, Maybe I better hold, hold off a couple of days. Anybody still around? Right? Yep. Or yeah. somebody offers to take you out to eat or bring your favorite <laughs> oh, dessert. <boy>. Come on. <laughs> Got it? You're right there. Every that time. Is that Every is time. very Every true. Time. Every you, you know, even when Jesus was on the cross, he said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which was the say in Hebrew, my God, my God, while I was out for He actually... This is so deep. These three are one, but these three are different. There's three that bear record in heaven. Well, Jesus, Father Jesus, the Son Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. Yes and no. If Jesus is the Father, then why would he pray to his Father like Jesus prayed to his Father? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Is he saying, myself, myself, why am I forsaken myself? Anybody still with me? Come on. That was painful. He was, he, was, he was in the garden. He prayed earnestly to who? To himself? And he asked earnestly three times, let this cup pass from you. Then listen to these words. But nevertheless, not my will, but well, if he's the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, he said, my will be done. But I think at that time he was specifically the Son. Yeah. Say what? I think at that particular time in history, he was actually betraying as a son only. He was Jesus the son only at that particular time. Well, he's still, That's why he cried out to the Father. That's my thinking. I mean, I could he, be he's still, he's still Jesus the son mm -hmm. 
<coughs> always. But at the, when the rapture takes place, he's coming back as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Somebody say amen. amen. Okay, go ahead and finish reading that picture. <coughs> but he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. You are an offense unto me. For, for you uh, savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. <coughs> Okay, verse 23, But he, Jesus, turned and said to Peter, said to Peter, Get thee behind me, Peter. Did he say that? No. What did he say? Get behind me, Peter. He said, Get behind me, what? Satan. Satan. How would you like for Jesus to call you a devil? Look at you and say, Get behind me, devil. No. Oh! Now, I'm just a human being. We're just human beings. Can you imagine one of us walking up to another brother or sister that's supposed to be close to us, living with us for three and a half years, and look square on the eyes and get behind the day? Well, at the time, they might be used of the devil. He is being used of the devil. He's sure not used by the Holy Ghost. He's a sister, brother, and Lord. You rebuke him. Listen, one more time. I do. Then Jesus said on uh, where am I? Verse 23, but he turned and said unto Peter. So he's talking to Peter. You take notice, he's not talking about the other disciples. He's talking directly to Peter. He said to Peter. In other words, he's not saying to Peter. He's talking to Peter. In other words, it would be the same as me coming over and talking to Sister Sue. I come up and I'm talking directly to Sister Sue. I'm not talking to Stephanie. I'm not talking to whoever. I'm talking to her. A conversation straight to her. And Jesus said unto, uh, and Jesus turned and, and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. My God. Thou art a offense unto me. Woo! Sister Jen, how would that make you feel if I came to you and called you a devil and I said, You're an offense to me? Would that, cut, would that not cut your heart? How many of you would say that cut your heart out? No, I would ask you why. Yeah, you know, I would That's my he personality. Tell, I'm not going to say that. He tells them why, too. I would say, Brother Humphrey, why? What, what sure. would give you the right, what do you see in me that? But how many of you know if Jesus says it, he's always right? Right, yeah. Who in the right mind would argue with the Lord? He said, but he turned and said to unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, devil, thou art an offense unto me. For thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. What's that word there, savest, mean? Savorous. Huh? I'm trying to savorous. 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 Once in the very other night, I back and take a little bite off of a good old cold movie. And then here today, I thought, well, I'm going to finish it off. So I had two, just one of them, but I made two bites out of it. And I saved some. <laughs> I'm getting every good cherry drop, every piece of sugar. And I was getting everything out of it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. I brought tonight yeah. put in your freezer. <laughs> so, so, listen to me. So, how many of you know once you eat that cake, it's gone? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Sometimes you might get a burp and get a little bit of a taste of something. But, you want it to last. And he's trying to explain to Peter here, you don't know what this is about. This is everlasting salvation unto the world. Here you are, you devil of hell. Don't want me to go to the cross. Anybody say with me? Because if I don't go to the cross, everybody's going to hell. And that includes, everybody say, the Old Testament saints. Mm -hmm. That means every person upon the face of the earth goes to hell. 
there's only one mediator between God and man. There's only one Savior. Somebody say amen. amen. So this is a powerful, powerful, powerful thing. So how many of you know when people bumps up against the Word of God? So I said, huh? It's the devil in them. Mm -hmm. Can I say that again? Yep, that's right. So when people start to you know, shirk up and say things and say, well, I don't believe it that way, I don't... Oh, you found out. So can a person that is saved be used of God or of the devil? Say yeah, there was a guy that I had ministered to for a long time. He was a homosexual. Microphone or else get loud. He was a homosexual. And he supposedly accepted the Lord, started going to church, started reading his Bible, turning around, and a friend of mine took him in. And all of a sudden he started going back to the old ways and drinking, carousing around. I went to my friend's house to stay with her through that night so she wouldn't be alone. He came home and he was mocking and jeering God like I've never seen before. Picked his Bible up, threw it across the room, and I went flying across the room and I, I, I thought of, I could see myself doing this one day, but I never really believed that I would get to that point. And I looked him right straight, square in the eyes, and I said, I rebuke you, Satan, you get out in the name of Jesus. And he turned and he looked at me and was mocking and laughing, and I said, you will not mock and jeer at my God. And I told him, get out. I took my hands and barely touched his back to head him out the door. She had opened the door, and he literally flew out the door, off the porch, almost onto the ground with barely touching him. But it was the spirit in him. Mm -hmm. It was the spirit in him. How many of you know that the Bible talks about you know, that has, See, that's another scripture you could have brought up to that. Once saved, always saved. When the devil's leaves, the house is garnish and clean. Garnish means you've got all the pictures and everything and clean, you know. But Satan returns and looks upon that house and finds it what? Um, he's empty. Left and garnished. Empty. And he said, I will return and take with me. Seven more spirits mm -hmm. in the last stage of the man will be worse than mm -hmm. the first. Yeah. Well, is that guy going to hell? He's demon possessed. Mm -hmm. Brother John Porter. How many know Brother John Porter and Sister Janet? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sister Janet called me today. Brother Humphrey, we're coming back from Florida. We went on vacation, so we're. John Piper, not Piper, Porter. Piper, Piper, yeah. Piper. <clears throat> We went to Florida on a seven-day vacation, but while we was down there on Sunday, we went to a Baptist church, and we had a very unusual experience. When we got in, the church was pretty well full, so they told us to come up and sat on the front seat. And when the preacher started to preach, she said he was preaching garbage. She didn't even know what he was talking about. And he walked back to Pastor John. Pastor John is the biggest brother Michael walked up to him and took his hand as hard as he could and slapped him right across the face. Oh my goodness. Sister Jan said, she said to us, oh my, what's Brother John going to do? Because Brother John's like I am. He don't play with no foolishness. But he kept his cool. He said to her, she said, he said, I'm going to call Brother Humphrey and ask him what he would have done. And they were laughing. He said, Brother Humphrey, what were you doing? I just stood my feet, feet and walked first to her and said, Pastor, was that anointed? Was that of God? If he said yes, I was going to say, BAM! Have a double portion, BAM! Another Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Well, now, was that of God that he slapped? No. Remember, this is a Baptist, once saved, always saved, does not believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. What was leading that pastor to slap another holy man in God's face. Can I tell you what? Yeah. Because that pastor sensed that Pastor John was knowing, <coughs> discerning that sin mm -hmm. was in the camp. Mm -hmm. And the devil hates you when you discern that. Come on. Come on. <coughs> Come on. Does anybody understand? We're still talking about the spirit. Mm -hmm. Does anybody understand that there's nine gifts of the Holy Ghost? One of them is called discerning, discerning of 
Satan has a counterfeit for every one that God has. And he has a gift called discerning of sin. So when you get around a demon, he knows if you're one of them or if you're not. Yeah, he knows if you're for him or against him. Remember what the devil said to seven sons of Stephen? Jesus we know. And Paul we know. But who are you seven? So that devil knew that here's a man of God sitting there. And that devil was so outraged, just like Peter, rebuked him. Let it be far from you. Let it be Nay, no, this ain't going to happen to you. I said, devil. And to walk up and slap the holy man of God across him. Not easy, but red mark. No, I no, because, me, I will. Don't see that's you. Okay. Every per, every person can, can do the way they want to. Let, let me say something to y'all. Just because I say what I did, I'd ask you, was that an honor of God? Was that of God? If he said yes, then I said, well, then you need some too. One father, one son, one Holy Ghost. And he got three real good ones just like he gave them to me. Okay. That's what I would have done. That does not mean that's what you should have done. So we say amen. Sounds like he wanted to make a show yeah. for the congregation yeah. or something. Yes. Now, why did he want to make that show? Because for who? For himself. And the congregation. Mm -hmm. What a mighty man of God he is. To slap somebody's face. Yeah, you get a no, nobody asked if he was yes, yeah. pastors or anything. But I can't tell you one thing about Brother John, Sister Jenny. Brother John did come in with a suit and tie on, well dressed, and Sister Jeff did too. And how many of know most churches forgot the dress code? So more likely he stood out like a sore thumb. I don't, how many different times her and I went to the churches and the pastor got off and would say, just because people come in a white shirt doesn't mean they're holy. It's just a show. What are you talking about? Because I was the only one there, I was like 200 people. Who's he, who's he knocking? What spirit was trying to knock at me? Not realizing God told me that I've got to do this. So you see how the spirit will try to mess you up? So I say amen? Okay. Now let's go to uh, Luke chapter 9. And uh, Sister Gina, I'm going to get you to read Luke chapter 9. Uh, at 55, you might pick up the verse or so again. <coughs> Chapter 9, 55. Another example of, uh, you know, not what spirit you are of. 9, 55. Okay. okay. But he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye okay, know let's back up a little bit, how I should get this whole thing. Okay, 54. Okay, what's going on? You have to read this whole thing so you understand. And he's going into a certain city. And anyways, uh, we're going to pick up at 55. And uh, anyways, uh, what's, what's happening is, have you ever talked to somebody and they're not paying attention to you? Mm -hmm. Have you ever been teaching a Sunday school lesson or preaching and so forth? And people were I had this, this, this past Sunday at the uh, service center. A certain girl was just sitting there with the cell phone talking to her mother. Said like it. They didn't even know what I was talking about. They wasn't even paying attention. How many of you know? It's still just trying to hold a conversation with them or trying to make them understand things. Because that's why I told the story about when I was in a potato patch. I was in church. Remember I told the story? Mm -hmm. Okay. Even though I was in church, I wasn't in church. I was planting potatoes. So we're going to find out here Jesus is. He's coming into a certain city, but his face, his mind was set on going to Jerusalem. Why was he going to Jerusalem? Everybody said to be crucified. Okay? Everybody still here with me? Yeah. So the, they do not, do not receive him. Because they can see that you know his mind isn't really there, anyways. 
How many of you ever went to visit somebody and you could tell when you went to visit them, they really didn't want you there? Anybody? Yep. Mm -hmm. So, no matter how nice you try to talk to them or whatever, whatever conversation. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. Best thing for you to do is just get up and leave because they won't even take notice you left. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's, let's pick that up there. You want me to start with 54? No, 51. Which one? Chapter 9, Luke 9, chapter 1. And it came to pass, when the time was come that he should be re received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. Okay. And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up. Received up. Everybody understand what that's all about? Up to heaven. Remember, resurrected to heaven. So the time was come that he had to go and crucify. So it says that he up and he steadfastly set his feet to face to go to Jerusalem. In other words, he was just had his mind set on him. So I do not believe at that very time he was very talkative, and he actually talkative. How many of you ever sometimes you get something on your mind and you don't really want to talk to anybody? You just well, I didn't know this. It was just a while ago, you know. I just you know it was in here and this and that. I love Sister Jane, my wife, and everybody. People was talking so what he was out there. But I just don't want to be around anybody. I just don't want to talk to anybody. I said, Lord, where can I go? And I went clean up to the far corner and sat there at the table. I did everything I could to just set away that people didn't know I was praying or just meditating the Lord. But how many of you know there's times that you just want to be alone with the Lord? Are mm -hmm. still with me? Mm -hmm. So if somebody had come and sat down at my table, then I'd talk to them. But my heart wouldn't be in it because my mind was on Jerusalem, Jesus, so to say, man. So his face was steadfast towards you. May God help us to get more serious about that. Steadfast. So to say, man. Amen. Uh, verse 52. And sent messengers before his face, and they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. Okay, so he sent messengers to go what, into a village in Samaria to make ready for him. So now he's going to Samaria. Even though they're going to Samaria, he's not wanting to go to Samaria. He's wanting to go where? Jerusalem. Why? He's going to finish. That's why he said it is finished. Okay. So what happens is, 53 says, and they did not receive him because his face... Whoa, 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 whoa. And they did not receive him. What's that next word? Because... Now, Don's going to tell us why they did not receive him. He's going to Samaria, but they don't receive him. Why ain't they going to receive him? His face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. Okay. Picture this here. Jesus comes in here. He sat here with us and so forth. And Jerusalem is over there. And he sat here and he just like, his face just looking towards Jerusalem, just looking to it. You can tell his mind's not here. So he's amen. Mm -hmm. So you get around somebody like that. Go. But if they just knew who he was, they'd just been so glad just to have him there. Just, will they say anything or not? Somebody say that. Just mm -hmm. See, we can never come to a place where we grieve the spirit by not loving him. Somebody mentioned a while ago, Quentin Grieve and Holy Ghost. Who was that? She did. Mother? I think so. 
So it wasn't me. No, it was you when you were saying about the guy that was here. He grieved his spirit. He's grieving his spirit here when she was telling the truth. How many of you know that I think sometimes we can grieve the spirit, crush the spirit, by how many? How many of you sometimes you just don't feel the Lord or His presence there? Be honest, come on. How many of you can say you feel Him all the time? I don't. But you know what I do. I still praise Him. Mm -hmm. Still thank Him. Still love Him. Whether I feel Him, or whether I see Him, or whether I don't, they should have been saying, Lord, we just thank You for coming. Hallelujah. Thank You, Lord, for blessing this room. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. We just love you, Jesus. We just love you, Jesus. So, what? But they just, well, if you ain't paying attention to me, I'm just getting out of here. I don't want to. I don't think that's where we are. If Jesus don't fuck you down to every one of our needs, we act like, I don't want nothing to do with you. It's good to feel him. But I believe sometimes he says, I'm just going to step back and weigh his all. And see if you really love me, if you miss me. I remember, I just said again today, and I'm saying this all the time, but Lord, I just wish there would be some way I could just, my wife said to me the other day, where you could just take it like a light switch, turn it off and off, just step through a room and stay in there. I just said, Lord, just a while ago, I said, Lord, I, you told me that I'd never come back. Like Peter, James, John, from last transfiguration, they wanted to stay there. They said so. But Jesus said, "No, you got to get back down." Just like Moses, when he received the Ten Commandments, and fasted forty days, forty nights, but he had to send him back to the camp. How many of you know? Would you? We make it home for Jesus. How many believe we're never going to want to come back? Oh, yeah. 